Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade eight, unit four, lesson number eight, practice problems. Our first question here says, Lynn was looking at the equation 2x minus 32 plus 4 times the quantity 3x subtract 2,462 equals 14x. She said, I can tell right away there are no solutions because on the left side you have 2x plus 12x and a bunch of constants. But you just have 14x on the right side. Do you agree with Lynn? Okay, well, let's look at this. So Lynn said there's no solutions. So 2x, 4 times 3x is 12x, and 2x plus 14x, or 2x plus 12x is 14x. So we would have, let's try and write this all out, 2x minus 32 plus 4 times 3x minus 2462. Move this slightly so my head's less in the way. There we go, that's a little better. Maybe even go up a little. There. We got rid of Mr. Boskin's head being a problem. 4 times 3x is 12x. 4 times 2,462. Let's just call that minus 4 times whatever 2,462 is. Then 2x minus 32. If we combine those, that would be 14x. This side is also 14x. The number of constants, well, there's 0 on this side, and the other side is 32. We've got this 32, and then whatever 4 times that works out to, which is plus something that is not 0. So, constant on each side are not going to agree. Do I agree with Lynn? Yes. Why? Because of all that stuff I just said. Next problem. Han was looking at the equation 6x minus 4 plus 2 times 5x plus 2 equals 16. He said, I can tell right away there are no solutions because on the left side you'll have 6x plus 10x and a bunch of constants but you just have 16x on the right side. Do you agree with Han? Well, let's check this one. It seems like a very similar problem, so it's probably right. Minus 4 plus 2 times 5x plus 2 equals 16x. If I distribute, 2 times 5x is 10x. 2 times 2 is 4. Bring down the other stuff. Now, let me combine like terms. Well, a negative 4 and a plus 4 is 0, and 6x and 10x is 16x equals 16x. Do I agree with Han? No. Why? There are no constants left on the left. If I were to try and solve this, I'd have to get rid of the 16x over here. If I take away 16x from that side, I have to take it away from the other side. And then I'm left with 0 equals 0. When does 0 equal 0? Always. That's always true. So that is not no solutions. That's infinite solutions. Decide whether each equation is true for all one or no values of x. 
So here I have 6x minus 4 and a negative 4 plus 6x. This could be written if I swap the sides of those as 6x minus 4, and then each side is identical. If each side is identical, that's true for all. Now, what about the next one? 4x subtract 6 equals 4x plus 3. We have 4x on each side, but those constants are different. So this one's going to be no values of x. And this bottom one, ooh, negative 2x, negative 3x, those do not match. That means it's probably true for one value. Let's try and solve it and see what we get. Okay, I don't like this negative 3x. I'm going to make it go away. How do we get rid of negative 3x? We add 3x. Do it to one side, do it to the other. Negative 2x plus 3x is x plus 4 equals, those canceled, we're left with 4. x plus 4 equals 4. What do I do now? I'd have to get rid of this 4 stopping the x from being alone. Do it to one side, you do it to the other. x equals, well, what's 4 take away 4? 0. That is true for one value. Because x equals 0 is a value. Okay, solve each of these equations. Let's start out by dividing each side by 3. Then I can get rid of that and not need to distribute. Those will cancel, and then we have x subtract 5 equals 6 divided by 3 is 2. Add 5 to each side. x equals, because those canceled, 2 plus 5 is 7. Now, ooh, another one with a nice number out in front we can get rid of. If I divide that side by 2 and divide that side by 2, 2 over 2 goes away. 0 divided by 2, you get $0. You put it in two piles. There's still $0 in each pile. So x minus 2 thirds equals 0. Add 2 thirds to each side. Those will cancel. And you are left with x equals 2 thirds. Now, oop, x is on each side. We got to get rid of the x's on one side. So I'm going to add x to each side. Because the left already had more, so let's get rid of them from the right. Those will cancel. 4x plus x is 5x minus 5 equals 2. Wish this problem had left us a little more space. 5x minus 5 equals 2. I just copied it over. Add 5 to each side to get the x by itself. 5x equals 2 plus 5 is 7. Divide each side by 5, and x equals 7 fifths. Okay, what have we got next? Ooh, points on a graph. The points, negative 2, 0, and 0, negative 6, are each on the graph of a linear equation. Is 2, comma 6 also on the graph of this equation? Explain or show your reasoning. So if I just quickly sketch out this graph, negative 2, 0 is here. 0, negative 6 is here, which means our line's going to look kind of like that, is the point 2, 6 on that graph? No. 
explain why. Hey, look at that. It's not anywhere close to where that line is. Now, ooh, triangles. In the picture, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, this guy here, is an image of triangle ABC, this guy here, after a rotation. Center of rotation is E. Okay, I'm with you so far. Let me move this a little bit so you can see the whole question. What is the side length of AB? AB is this, which corresponds to A prime B prime. And we know A prime B prime is 9. So what's the length of AB? Also 9. Why? Because AB is congruent to a prime b prime because a rotation is a rigid transformation. What's the measure of angle d? Well, or what's the angle of d prime? d is 45, so d prime also has to be 45. Explain how you know, because angle D has to be congruent to angle D prime because a rotation is a rigid transformation. Do we have another problem? We don't. Okay, that's it for today. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.